Hey guys, thanks for watching When Nature's Calling Outdoors. Today we're going to can venison. Uh, we're going to jar it up, we're going to cook it in the pressure cooker and put it on the shelf. It'll last a good 18 to 24 months. Um, it's great for quick, easy meals. Uh, it'll turn out it'll turn out good and tender every time. And I generally use those the front legs and the real crappy pieces of meat that you generally just grind up and you really don't know what else to do with. The possibilities are endless. I've done uh, deer stew. I've put potatoes and fresh green beans and frozen corn in it, pressure cooked it, and then when you open it, it just heat it up and eat deer stew. Um, I've also done, and I will be doing today, some Italian beef. We'll be adding some pepperoncinis and some Italian beef seasoning and some beef bouillon. But we'll show you what we do, show you how simple and easy it is, and maybe it'll help you uh, find a way to store your deer. So one of the first things you're going to do is make sure you have all this fat cut off of this deer meat before you put it in the jar. Otherwise you're not going to be very pleased with the end product. Don't worry about the blue skin so much. It will cook up. But if you can cut it off easily, go ahead and cut it off. But you're going to get into some pieces that have you know, just a little bit in there. It's not real thick. Just chunk it up. But I generally chunk my pieces up before I put them in the uh, jars. And then I'll show you what I do after that. But like I said, just trim up. Make sure you get all the fat off of them for sure. This is part of that front leg shank that's full of all them tendons. And what I do is I'll cut this lengthwise one time. And then I'll take and chunk this up and cut across those, that sinew in, in blue skin, that silver skin. And the first time somebody told me that you could do this, and it, it would cook all that up and you wouldn't even know it was there. I thought that was crazy until I did it myself, but it works. Okay guys, now that we've got our meat all chunked up, I've already pre-sanitized these. Uh, what you do is you can either boil them, but I like to put them in the dishwasher that gets them hot enough, to make sure they're good and clean. Uh, sterilize them before you start packing meat into them. But we're going to fill these up and leave about an inch of head space up here at the top. We're going to try and pack it in as tight as we can, uh, not leave any air where the meat's all at. So I just personally just start throwing it in there and then I'll grab a spoon, like a wooden spoon. You see all this air that's in there? I'll take a wooden spoon and then just kind of push it down in there. You can do it with a, with a handle. And it, you can push it right down to where that air is at. And you push that meat in there a little tighter. I think they call it, like if you was doing green beans, they call it burping the, the, the can. You're just trying to get all of that air out of it. But we can pack in a little bit more. Pack it in tight. And leave about an inch of head space at the top of each jar. I'm going to take one of these chunks out. Um, because we're not going to put any liquid in it, it will make its own. So the only thing we're going to do is we're going to pack all the jars with all the meat and then we'll turn around and we'll add the seasonings that we're going to put in it. Now on the ones that I want to do Italian beef, I'll go through and I'll get some pepperoncinis and take the stems off the top of them. I'll throw a couple pepperoncinis in there, stuff some meat in there, throw a couple more pepperoncinis in there. Probably could have done this one in a pint jar. I think that's what I'll do. I'll put that in a pint. Try it again. A couple of pepperoncinis. Some more meat. Some more pepperoncinis. And again, leave yourself about an inch of head space. That one's pretty full. I got one more pepperoncini here. And I already added another one. So those will be my two Italian beef. And then I got just a few pieces of meat left and we'll make we'll make everything work out of this. So for the Italian beef, I'm gonna add these beef bouillon packets. They're low sodium because the Italian beef seasoning has got quite a bit of salt in it. So I'm going to add this packet of seasoning. I'm going to add each, each one of these. I'm 
Then I got Louis Italian beef. Man, this is some good stuff. I'll take this packet open. Maybe. And I'm going to add half a teaspoon to each one of these. Less than half of that pint. And that's all I'm going to add to those. Okay, we got these packed. Now we're going to put a quarter uh, teaspoon of garlic powder in each one, a quarter teaspoon of onion powder in each one, one beef bouillon cube in each one, and a half a slice of bacon. You don't have to add the bacon, I just like the flavor that it adds. And then we got our lids. But I have boiled these lids to sanitize them and kind of get that rubber gasket a little gooey. They just got to be sealed. And now we'll get ready to put them in the pressure cooker. Okay, guys, we're going to fill this up. Go with the recommendations of your canner. This canner has two filling lines. There's one here and one here, and you can kind of see the ring where I have done this before. So I'm going to fill this up with water to here, place my jars in here, then we'll get going from there. Okay, guys, I got my canner full, my pressure cooker full, to the fill mark where it needs to be. Place my jars in here. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Place these jars in here. They're all down on the bottom, we got them all sealed in. This particular canner, there's a, a lock that in place. I'm going to turn the burner on. And now I'm going to leave this alone and I'm going to let this start to come to a boil and wait till steam starts steadily coming out of this hole. This is going to end up popping up to the top when it starts to build up pressure. And with this particular pressure cooker, it comes with three weights. One, by its no weight on it at all, is five pounds. And you add another one to it to make it ten pounds of pressure, which is what I need here at my elevation. You could need uh, up to fifteen pounds of pressure, depending on where you're located at. It's real simple. Just get on. Google and say how many pounds of pressure do I can meet at at and put the name of the town you're in and it will tell you most everybody's at about 10 pounds of pressure. So once this gets going, we'll set this on top here and cover this up and this will start dancing. Once that starts dancing, we're going to set a timer for 90 minutes and walk away from it. Okay guys, as you can see, that's starting to rock. Just give it time and it builds up the right amount of pressure to start rocking at. So now we're going to set a timer for 90 minutes. And we're just going to hit start. Now's a really good time. You got 90 minutes to just sit there and let this thing do its thing. But you're going to. Um, don't open this until this is done. When this timer goes off, we're going to shut the, shut the heat off. We're just going to let that continue to rock until it cools down on its own and quits rocking. You can have a minute we'll move this. But now we've got 90 minutes. 
to do to sit around and do nothing and wait for it to get done. So now is a good time to use that cooking oil we always talk about. Today, my choice of cooking oil happens to be Honey Brown by the Dundee Brewing Company in Rochester, New York. Get yourself a little oiled up while you're doing this. No job's complete without a little cooking oil. We'll see you when it's done. Okay, so we're down to the last few seconds. This is popped out, that's dancing around. I got about 30 seconds. I'm going to shut this flame off, kill the timer, and this is going to continue to bounce around. Do not try to open this until this puts dancing and that top button, pressure button goes down before you try and take that off and let some of that crisp pressure and steam out. This literally is a pressure pump. If you try and open it, it will explode everywhere. So just be careful when you're doing stuff like this. Turn off the flame and let it cool down. It's going to continue to dance until all that pressure finally gets out of here. But now we've got the heat source off. We'll wait and let it cool down and then we'll open it up. Okay guys, it's cooled off. Pull that off. Cut the buttons down. We're going to release it. When you open this, open it backwards so that the steam goes up the back side. There's still steam in there. And, you know, steam burns. Put this over here in the sink. And then, make sure you this jar grabber. Now I didn't put any white vinegar in here, but if you can see, that is boiling in there still. So we're going to let that sit there and cool off, but had I put white vinegar in there, had I put white vinegar in there, there would be no hard water on the jars, it would be pretty clean, pretty clear. You can also see there's plenty of juice in there. It made it on its own. And we're going to set these on this towel and let them cool off. This is how you beat them. It's really good. This is really boring. Give you an idea here. Huh? Look at that thing just boiling away. So we're going to let that all just sit there and then we'll wipe the jars off with a uh, wet rag or some white vinegar just to clean off the deal but as they cool off you'll hear them pop go tick 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 and we'll just tomorrow morning we'll wipe the jars off and put them in the in the cupboard so there you go canned venison that's how easy that is it takes a little bit of time but it's yours and it's put up on the shelf for 18 to 24 months it's fully cooked and you don't need to refrigerate it when you want to eat it you all you got to do is open it up and heat it up and you can make fajitas barbecue baked potatoes you can make uh, add egg noodles and, and make a like a stroganoff out of it we do all kinds of stuff with it it's quick and easy and the ones that I did the Italian beef out of all I have to do is heat it up and make sandwiches out of it it's ready to go hey I hope you liked the video I hope you learned something don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there and be sure to give me that thumbs up and while you subscribe Hit that bell, get a notification every time I make another video. Thanks for watching Nate, When Nature's Calling Outdoors. We'll see you next time. I gotta eat.